Hey everybody, thanks for checking this out. Uh, you know what, I was going to try to do this entire back issue haul in three videos, but I'm going to split it up into four because there is so much stuff. Um, I'm just going to get right into this. I they, My store had an entire run of um, the Daredevil Born Again storyline, written by Frank Miller, drawn by David Mazzucchelli. Um it looks like season three of the Daredevil Netflix show is going to be at least in part based on this story. So that's pretty cool. And I, I used to have the trade paperback for this and it's a, it's a really good story, but I lent it to a friend and never got it back. So I'm glad to finally have it again, especially in the original single issue format. So, I got issues 227, 228, 229, 230. I'll move these aside. And I'm sorry about this really kind of jacked up background thing, but I put that on there to kind of reduce the glare on the top part of the book from the lights overhead. I got issue 231, 232, which I think is the first appearance of Nuke, and 233, and that's the entire run, and I'm glad to have it. So moving on to something completely different, how many of you haven't seen this in many, many years, or thought about it, or if you ever even knew about it at all. Sectars, Warriors of Symbion, number one. <laughs> I was kind of surprised to find this. They actually, my store had like a whole bunch of these 80s, um, I don't know what you call them, like Marvel adaptation comics. of Like a bunch of them were star comics that they were doing at the time, like Ewoks and I don't even remember what all. And then they had um, Sectars number one. They have this at a 9.2, and it's in really pristine condition. As far as I can tell, I haven't opened it up and flipped through it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I barely remember it from when I was a kid. I think the toy line was ran for like a year, maybe. And the comic book... It's probably only, I don't know, somewhere between 8 to 12 issues, something like that. It's pretty short. And I don't know if anything is ever going to happen with it in the future, but there's probably some Hollywood executive somewhere with like a, a big book of untapped 80s intellectual property. And he's looking at those returns from the Michael Bay Transformers movies. And he's in his book, he's probably got sectars circled in a pin with a bunch of dollar signs drawn next to it so you never know i don't even know who owns this now honestly so we'll just move it aside but you know it's something different i don't think i've ever seen anybody show that before let's move on to some detective comics this is uh not in the best of shape it's kind of a mid-grade. They have it at a 4.0, but I don't know. It's got a lot, you know, a lot of spine damage, a lot of ticks and stuff. It looks like there's a tear there. There's a little chunk taken out right there. But this is one of those uh, Neil Adams Batman comics that nobody ever shows. You know, I, I was looking for them. I'm always looking for them because the Neil Adams Batman stuff is great. The store's that I went to, they didn't have um, the famous stuff, you know, they didn't have any of the Batman issues, like the Joker issue, or the first Silver Age Two-Face, or the first Ra's al Ghul, or the um, Demon of Gothos Mansion. They didn't have any of the famous Detective Comics issues, like the early Man Bat issues, or the first League of Assassins, or Talia al Ghul, or any of those, but they did have this, and this is the second ever 
issue um, written by Denny O'Neill and drawn by Neil Adams. And people don't really ever show this one either. So it's pretty cool. I was happy to find it. They had a couple of other Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams issues of Detective Comics as well that are also not the famous ones. But I'll take whatever I can get. They had, oh, that was issue, what was that, 397? Yeah. This is issue 404. And 410. They're really good looking comics. Um, 404 and 410 are solidly mid grade. They look pretty good. I mean, they're not superb, but they're not terrible either, um, condition wise. And I mean, in near mint condition, they're, you know, they go for what, 200 bucks? So I think this one here was the most expensive one that there was and I paid twelve fifty for it so I can't complain about that move on and do a few more issues of detective comics um, we've got issue 529 uh, this is the first appearance of Nocturna there's a Fairly minor character, but really what happened is I saw, actually this is the second one that I got. At first I picked up this issue of Batman because I've got, I don't know, maybe about 75% of Batman between issues 400 to 500. So I was going to go back and start in on the 300s now. I saw this issue, I thought the cover looked pretty cool, and so... Um, I kind of looked into this character and wanted to find her first appearance and I did it is this issue here the next issue of Detective Comics after this issue 530 has uh, in my opinion a better cover that has Nocturna and I think Batman fighting in a hot air balloon or something like that um, but they didn't have that issue I'll be on the lookout for it though because it's pretty cool looking I also got Detective Comics number 535. That is, I think it's like the first time that the Jason Todd Robin and Batman ever actually kind of fight with each other. So, I don't know. That's kind of cool. And finally, before I cut this one off, I got some year two. We got part one, part two, which has a McFarlane cover. And I couldn't find part three, but they did have part four, which also has a McFarlane cover. So definitely going to be on the lookout for that part three. That's all I got for this um, quarter of my back issue haul. So, um, feel free to leave a comment if you want to respond to anything or tell me something else I should be able to look out for. Um, and subscribe to my channel. Get to watch the rest of this haul and some more videos because I've got lots of comics I could show off. But, but that'll be it for now.